I'm Ron Turner. I support NASA with the Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. And let's rate these iconic video game spaceships as we look at them. There's a Star Destroyer docked for repairs at the shipyard. Vulnerable, but far from defenseless. Well, that's really cool. Of course, this what we're looking at is is, is the classic X-wing uh, fighter. NASA is, is a civil agency. You know, we have no no designs on weapons in space. Even in the U.S., even on the you know the military side, there there's no overt effort to repair weapons in space. Lasers are, have been demonstrated, you know, lasers have been demonstrated at a technical level, um, at a demonstration level, as an effective armament. So you, you could, in fact, uh, anticipate using lasers as a weapon. And one of the big things when I talk propulsion is Where's the fuel? Where are they storing the fuel? If you were a real spaceship in the current world, uh, the fuel uh, component for getting from A to B is sometimes as much as 90% of the mass of your spacecraft. So in every case, you know, I'm not going to belabor it each time, but that's going to apply, you know, just about every time. X-wings are, you know, everywhere in, in, in um, everybody's Star Wars universe. Definitely give that, that's up there with a 10. That's one of my favorites. Okay, we're talking about something that goes 2.6 light years per day. Heavy uh, weaponry. Uh, let me comment first on, you know, the elephant in the room, which is light years per day. The s speeds there are utterly fantastic. What we would really like to be able to do here on Earth is, is get small spacecraft, and I'm talking gram-sized spacecraft with perhaps solar sails that are illuminated by lasers up to just a tenth of the speed of light. If we can do that, we can do amazing things. Anything that tries to talk about breaking the speed of light barrier, that's not in the cards anytime soon, but we certainly do look at ways to potentially get fractional light speed, which if you can't get fractional light speed, you're never gonna get to a nearby star. Let me give it two numbers. Every one of these where the speed is too high, I'm gonna give them a realism factor of one. In terms of coolness factor, hey, I'm a space geek. Why can't I just give all these high numbers? I'll give this one a good seven. Uh, well, it's very colorful. They do the armaments very, very well. They do all the, you know, sensors and, and, and attachments very, very well. Uh, the propulsion is where you have to take a leap of faith. Uh, it takes us a year to get from Earth to Mars with current, you know, technologies. That just wouldn't work in a, in, in a game. So what I do like is that in game they have a distinction between traveling speeds in local space versus you know the warp speed so that's always in any science fiction that that's always the one area where you know reality starts to take a back seat its coolness factor is high because just just the overall design looks really re really neat i'll give it an 8 This is very cool. It's an atmospheric flyer, which is, is kind of cool because now you at least have your source of fuel inside the atmosphere. Mach 4.2 is something we would really strive to do if we could get a high Mach flyer anywhere, since that would really revolutionize the travel on the Earth. We have a hard time getting over that Mach 1 barrier colorful Mach 4 in the atmosphere. Realism, I could imagine that the realism, even the velocity, not bad, four or five. Coolness factor, hey, you know, who, who wouldn't want a laser cannon smart bomb launcher going at Mach 4? I'll give that another, another eight, let's say. It's a gigantic armada-like uh, ship, very, very large. It looks pretty awesome, and it would, in fact, take a lot of effort and a lot of capability to deflect an asteroid. It's something there is a lot of attention being paid to. In fact, the NIAC program is and has funded some studies on how to deflect asteroids. Right now, we're funding a program where actually all you have to do is place a titanium rod in front of an asteroid as it approaches the Earth. So the titanium rod uh, doesn't even have to be 
be moving very fast because the asteroid is moving very fast. When the asteroid hits that titanium rod, it just shatters the asteroid. They have done some really detailed uh, shatter calculations to show how the, the shock uh, from the impact decimates the asteroid to the point that instead of a devastating, you know, city buster kind of hit, windows aren't even broken. If you remember uh, the, an asteroid that flew over uh, Russia a few years ago, uh, just the shock wave from it shattered windows over, you know, a very large area. So it's a serious problem. It's out there for uh, asteroid mining and asteroid defense. Let's give it a good six or seven. Avatar, um, top speed 15, whoa, one and a half AU per second, very large volume. We're in the domain of what would be called colony ships. There's no reason why you can't build as big as you want to build as long as you have access to the material. We had a study uh, by another fellow on how to build a 5,000 person colony ship and it relied on collecting asteroid material and bringing the asteroid material back to a basically a dry dock in space and doing the construction in space. Realism, we're back down at one, but in terms of coolness factor, this is a good seven. the alien ship, of course. NASA would just be delighted to discover some evidence on some exoplanet that there's something about the atmosphere of that exoplanet that triggers a belief that that exoplanet might have life. In fact, there was an announcement not too long ago of a planet where the spectroscopy of the planet indicated it may have a, you know, a gas uh, and atmosphere composition that could be conducive uh, to life. We studied this thing called the solar gravity lens using the sun as, as a lens, which if it works, every indication is that the physics works beautifully. But if you could do that, you could actually magnify an Earth-sized planet at a, on a star that's more than five light years away to the degree that it would be equivalent uh, resolution to actually be able to see structure on the surface of the planet, not structures, structure like indications of city uh, networks and things like that. Coolness factor, hey, let's go right up there with an eight or a nine. This is a commercial vessel, Torrens out of St. Clair, registration number MSV7760, calling Sebastopol traffic control. The point of this station, a very large, uh, very large station in space, there, there's nothing that says we can't build those things. Other than cost and cost benefit, who's going to pay for it? Is it possible to build a very large structure like this in space? Absolutely. But do we need them today? Well, not today. Um, so we're going to have to look for a customer. There's nothing about this station that is unrealistic. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, you know, a nine out of 10 on, on realism. Just, just to push it to its limits, uh, in some of their studies, they show uh, that they're going to look at what would it take to build a dry dock so big we could build the Death Star. <laughs>